everyone. Hello, hello, hello. It's Marion Wallace with Restoring Ghettos Forgotten. And I am here this morning because we all know it's been a lot going on in the news. And I am not a gossiper, so I'm not going to be like everybody else. But I did want to try to put another spin to it with this Mr. Jackson debacle, <laughs> him and his poor lovely wife. Um, so I just, I'm going to have a conversational piece about it and then you guys can chime in and tell me what you think and, and add some good pointers to how women can best serve each other, uh, when we do go through ordeals like this. And so again, um, it's just a conversational piece, but ladies, I'm not understanding how we're, um, we're jumping on the wife. Miss Jackson, I, I'm not understanding that. I'm not understanding why we're looking at this woman and we're saying, oh, she's a hot mess. Yeah, personally, I wouldn't have went on um, YouTube or anywhere else with my hat on. Anybody can tell you that knows me. Like, today I came as I am with pretty much no makeup on. Um, but I'm never going to be like, I think all I got is a little color on my lip. But that's it and so because i know how the world is the world is very visual with with many of us are very superficial and surface based so unless we can get with how the person looks on the outside we don't even want to hear nothing they have to say and that's unfortunate because you could miss some really good connections to really solid people that are so much deeper than the surface and so that's why i'm like ladies we need to stop and I haven't done it, but a lot of women are, are really, really dogging her out. And she's the victim in all of this. And I say victim because regardless of her belief system and what she believes marriage should be, she's upholding her end of the bargain and he isn't. So he's the one that's the villain. She's, she's the victim in this. And a lot of people feel like, you know, well, she's stupid because she stayed or whatever. But I'm like, her vows to her marriage may go so much deeper than any of us can understand and who are we to judge her because she wants to make her marriage work now i'm not saying that if that happened to me that that would be me i'm not saying that at all i don't want to seem like i'm so high spiritually that um you know, I could do the same thing because it just really depends personally. It depends on where I, I am in my life, what juncture of my life I'm at. Because I know some of us women, we get to a certain age or a point in our lives where we're just like, okay, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not putting up with that type of mistreatment or behavior. So it just really depends if I ever was to go through something like that, where I am at that particular juncture in my life. So I can't say, well, if that happened to me, I would be gone and, you know, there would be no counseling. There would be nothing. I can't say that. Um, now, I know for one thing, I know that where I am in my life at this particular point, if I had somebody in my life that repeatedly hurt it, um, repeatedly hurt me the same way all the time, then no, then my boundaries would kick in. Well, first of all, it wouldn't be over and over again. Um, then, I, you know, when you when you really love yourself, there's there's a certain standard that you, you hold everybody that you're in relationship with. And not just uh, intimate relationship, but everybody. You hold people to a certain standard. And that's because you love yourself and you now know what you deserve, want, desire, need in order for the relationship to feel like it's mutual. So with being mature and knowing what I want now, I know darn well I wouldn't want somebody that was cheating on me before the marriage and continually repeating, like this person is a habitual cheater. I don't know if there's any help for that person. Now I know God can do all things, but I'm just saying that you gotta watch people's behavior. You know, if you really wanna know who somebody is watch them watch their behavior and if they're giving you all these patterns and they're never changing then that's your answer pretty much and so personally i wouldn't be able to stay with a guy like that where i'm at in my life right now and i say that where i am in my life because 
apparently this woman is not there she's not in that space um in her life maybe she has some more maturing to do maybe she has some more work to do inside maybe she has to learn how to love herself a little bit more uh but she prayerfully she will get there and then eventually she'll be like you know hey i gotta move around if, you, if you're really not going to change and i wanted to make this statement because for one I, I want us to stop beating her up let's stop beating her up she's been through enough for two we really can't judge people's situations because i tell you one thing if you're in a marriage and you get to judge in other people's marriage that same situation may knock on your door that's just the way it is like we put that energy out we may get it back so be careful about who you put your mouth on on people's personal situations and and so i just wanted to state that you know we gotta be real careful of what we talk about um talk about other people we really should be uplifting other people and building other people up especially us women like we all been through that um and I'm going to say something about the religious side of it because she was quoting scripture and all of those things and all of that's gravy. You know, that's perfect if that's where she is. But you don't let religion brainwash you because some people will try to brainwash you with that religious stuff to make it fit their lifestyle and so that you can cater to them. So they, they use it as a form of manipulation, which is witchcraft. So it's really not it's really not true religion if you're using it to control or manipulate so you gotta be real careful with that because i've seen men do that they want to hold their wives to this high standard way up here when they're just scraping the bottom of the bucket and oh i'm human i'm not perfect please forgive me no i'll forgive you once <coughs> excuse me i haven't taken my allergy pills this morning and i'm coming back from dropping my daughter at school but I wanted to shoot this little video but again i'll forgive you once for, for for doing something to me but if it's repeatedly then i see it's a pattern and then i see that if you know that it hurts me and you continually do it you don't love me you don't i don't care how much you claim to love me you can't possibly love me if you continue hurting me the same way repeatedly so that's called boundaries having healthy boundaries i had to learn that because as a child I wasn't reared or raised on having healthy boundaries. The African American community, because we were trained way back in the day, we were trained to accept the abuse from our masters, the rape, the abuse, anything they could possibly do to us. We were trained to accept it and forgive them because, you know, that's how we, if we forgive them, that's how God forgive us and that's how we go to heaven you know that was a form of manipulation and control to keep the blacks the african americans under their foot we had to fear them we could not stand up for ourselves and we had to forgive them and a lot of that to this day and a lot of people would be like well why is she bringing up slavery because it has a lot to do with our religious like belief system a lot of us learned religion incorrectly we learned christianity incorrectly i don't believe i serve a god that would be okay with somebody beating me every single day of my life that's not the god that i serve see that's why you have to know god for yourself so nobody else can come in and manipulate you and control you so that it only benefits them and you're just the in the servant role your whole life so and i wanted to put that out there because a lot of us we think like that. I no longer think like that. I, I figured out that was erroneous teaching. I had to study and show myself approved. I purchased books on uh, how to build healthy boundaries, how to rec recognize um, toxic behaviors that we may have within ourselves. I went to counseling. I did all these things to get all the erroneous teachings and lifestyles out of me because I saw it growing up as a child. and. and and so you know you mimic everything you see as a child and so maybe that's something that needs to happen with this young lady maybe she's been taught religion um as a form of manipulation and control by whoever taught it to her because it starts really really early in life and then somebody will come along and see where you are in your head space and they'll use it against you if you're not careful and if you don't know god for yourself 
it's very important because a lot of people talk about God and Christian and Christ and all of those things but sometimes it's a little bit obvious to me that they don't really know God because if they really knew him if they really had a personal relationship with him they would know he would not be okay with continual abuse from another person they would know that because he speaks to us to our spirits the holy spirit is prevalent and he and he will tell you and he will show you the truth and he will give you discernment and then you will become wiser and then he will also give you understanding so you can understand what he's giving you in discernment and without that close relationship just between you and your maker you'll miss a lot of that and then before you know it you'll just be going biblically off of what you've been taught and what is being preached to you but it could be being used in the wrong way so that's what i think is going on with her and it may be going on with a lot of other people and not just women but men as well we have to get to know god for ourselves we have to understand and have that personal loving relationship with him without the fear because a lot of people taught fear religiously and it, it, it crippled our people it crippled us because we didn't know which way to turn you know we made one one mistake then we were going to hell and this really did a number on our mental health it really did and a lot of people is dealing with that right now today when i say i don't fear god i love him and i reverence him with how i live my life but i don't fear him because i feared somebody before and i wasn't in right relationship with that person i want to be in right relationship with my maker which means i don't fear him i I don't fear him I trust him and I love him and I reverence him with how I live my very life that's how I've decided to be in relationship with my father in heaven now for other people they've been taught to fear so every wrong thought that crosses their mind or every like one bad decision that they make they feel condemned condemnation is not for the person who believes in Christ that's over with there is no condemnation so if there's no condemnation why do we have so many broken, fearful Christians out there? If God brought Jesus Christ into the world to reconcile us with him, then we have all power. We, we, sin is defeated. We can, we can walk away from sin. We don't have to succumb to it. So don't sit up and believe a man when he said, that's just my sinful nature. No, you choose to do that. That's your choice. The consequences after that choice you make is on you <coughs> I'm sorry not on me but on you those are your choices you have control over your flesh and 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 I'm telling you ladies beware of men that claim that they don't you don't want no parts of them you don't want to fall in love with them you don't want to be married to them if they feel like because a lot of men say monogamy is, is unnatural if a man tells you that walk away if you know you can't handle sharing your man walk away from that brother because I guarantee you he gonna have women a trail of women following behind him and some men just have no control over their flesh they just don't want it and I say they I think they have control they just choose not to and they know who to marry you know they know who to marry because there are some women that's not gonna put up with that the moment they find out their spouse is, is cheating they walk away and they stay away because we ladies we treat we teach our men how to treat us we do we do we do we do we have to understand and i've said this in one of my other videos that we are the prize a man that find that the wife find it a good thing we are the prize so we don't have to be walking around here trying to turn flips and and and, and dishonor ourselves and god because we're trying to keep a man no you're the prize act like it hold yourself way up here and so, you know, let's let's stop getting down on sister girl because maybe she just hasn't grown to that level yet of understanding. I mean, it seems like she has the, uh, uh, I'm not going to say the wisdom part, but it seems like educationally, maybe she's been reared in church or I don't know anything about her, but she knows a lot about the Bible, but maybe she just hasn't gotten with the understanding part of it yet because we have to have the understanding of it and to make all this cohesive and make it all work together so we need to lift this young lady miss jackson up in prayer and pray that she grows and matures and understands her worth and to love herself and i i um think we all need to be that way we all need to learn how to love and accept ourselves for who we really are 
and that way the more we love ourselves the less bull we're going to accept from other people and I mean everybody because I think a lot of times we believe that our romantic relationships are the most important relationships and I don't think they are I don't think they are our most, our, our most important relationship should be with the people that we are surrounded around every single day. Our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, our brothers, our uncles, our aunties, friends, family. Once you learn how to, I'm sorry, once you learn how to engage the people around you every single day and you're good to them and they're good to you and you have this reciprocity thing going on, then I think that teaches us how to handle our mates. It, it really does. I think that teaches us how to deal with our own mates. So we're so quick to jump and say, oh, I need a man to complete me. Or, oh, I need a relationship. Or even for a man, I need a wife or I need a husband. No, you need to know how to love yourself without them first. So that way nobody comes in and mixes, mixes it up for you. You know, it's like if we really don't know how to love and accept ourselves, then somebody could come in and manipulate that situation. And that's a lot of times what happens to women that repeatedly take these men back that cheat on them and eventually the some husbands are so low down and i'm gonna call them for what they what they really are they're so low down um if if she accepts the cheating eventually if he breaks her down enough to where he habitually cheats on her over and over again and she keeps forgiving him and she brings him back in he's wearing her down he's grooming her to be the type of woman that's going to eventually accept the fact that he has a whole nother family somewhere else or he just gets down like that he has a lot of women and then eventually he may even try to bring the woman in his home or the women in his home and make her okay with all of that bull so how does this work when you're a christian i want to know because i I'm, I'm lost this is happening every single day. And this is another reason why people are running away from Christianity. This is happening, you guys. You have uh, women that has other women on their husbands. And you have men that have other women on their wives. And they're all in the same home sometimes together. It'll blow your freaking mind if you really knew the backstories to a lot of these leaders or to a lot of these people that you hold high. You're really, when you really see the truth, you'll know. Not None of us can judge. None of us can judge each other because we don't know what's going to be knocking on our doorstep or how we're going to handle it. So we shouldn't judge anyone. I think we can give our opinions, but we need to stop calling this woman stupid or she's crazy or she's dumb. And especially stop talking about how she looks. Because normally a woman, how she looks, that's how she feels. Well, not normally, but sometimes how she feels on the inside is how she's gonna look on the outside but i mean that's never really been me i can feel like dirt but i'ma always shine i'ma always show up i'ma always because i know my god is more powerful than any problem or circumstance that i could be going through so i'ma show up i could be feeling like i'm weeping inside but i'ma show up and i'ma show out because i know there are so many bitter lonely people out there that wants to see me with tears in my eyes or wants to see me looking crazy you know for whatever reason and i think that's sad within itself if you if you want to see another human being hurt and they've done nothing to you you need to check yourself i hate that this woman is hurting i hate that she uh he pulled he manipulated her to pull her out like that because there is no way he should have done his wife like that no way and I say, with him doing her like that, I mean, I never really believed in this dude. I never, because I know people that they talk a lot, but I watch their behavior. I watch how they treat their wives or their children or the people that's the closest to them. So I'm like, okay, I've never seen his wife. I never really believed or trusted in him from the jump. That's called discernment. You smiling and you doing all this. And then when he used to get on there and go, he used to have some type of little card game that he would play and he would be drinking wine. And I seen his flesh while he was doing that. I was like, okay, this brother, he on a whole nother thing. Let me just keep it on moving. There's a couple other that you guys, you Christian women follow. Some look at, some look guy that he's gay. And I won't mention his name. I'm pretty sure y'all know who I'm talking about. But he's very charismatic. And I think he's a beautiful brother. Uh, but... Christian women follow this this guy 
and they know all he talks about is homosexual sex. So I'm saying, how is he gonna teach you how to get a man if he wants a man? Come on, ladies. He's a brother, he's not a sister. And, and we follow this stuff and we eating it up and then it's just poisonous. It's poison in our soul. It's po we have to watch what we allow into our space. I say that all the time, guard your gates. If you're a Christian woman, you have no reason following a gay man that talks about nothing but gay sex all the time. And I'm not against gays, but how does homosexual sex help the, the heterosexual woman to get a man? How can you relate to that? But he somehow, he makes it work and he makes it fit, but it's a lot of uncleanliness that's in that. So if we want to call ourselves Christian, we got to clean ourselves up because we're dirty we're filthy and we're dirty and we have no right talking about the jackson family i pray for his wife i pray that she comes to an understanding about what's really going on and i pray she doesn't let all these religious people brainwash her into submission to suffer for the rest of her life i pray that that happens for her now this this jackson guy i really don't he don't concern me at all because he just i put him in the pile where he belongs See, there's different piles we need to put people in in our lives. In a pile where you take serious, in a pile where they're a joke. He goes in the joke pile. So I don't need to be bothered with him. I don't need to debate anything with him. I don't need to concern myself with him. I'm dealing with the people that I take seriously. Those are the people that I'm going to deal and engage with and do whatever God has called me to do with those people. What we do as some of us do we, we we keep our hands on the people that should be in the junk pile and we all in there and guess what it's junk so that's where we're co-mingling our spirit and our soul with something that's not it really any of our business but if we already know it's junk why are we even entertaining ourselves with it let's let's stay over here and deal with what's good what's right and, and guard our gates on all of this unnecessary crap and it's all of it, all it is, is distractions. It's pulling us away from our purpose. God has something that he wants each and every one of us to do. But if, if the enemy can keep us distracted, we won't do it. I had a woman that reached out to me and Rick uh, maybe four or five years ago. She reached out to me. She, she had a ministry and she was going to do this great uh, conference. And she wanted me and Rick to come and speak. And I was cool with that because we were going to be reaching uh, at-risk youth and that's my passion I love working with children and, and young people that's what God has called me to do because I used to be one of those children those at-risk youth I was and so so we were all gun ho and we trying to put it all together and then uh, and then God not God but then the world elected President Trump and when I tell you everybody lost their mind because this man was in office that they forgot their goals, their dreams, their purpose, and everything. They just forgot it. It was a great distraction. Not once did I anger myself over that president, because guess what? I put him in that pile that I don't take serious pile. When I Once I put people in that pile, they don't concern me. I don't care what they do anymore. A lot of people say, oh, you're just so cold. No, I'm not cold. We only have a certain amount of time on this earth, on this planet. And we need to be moving and working. We got a lot of work to do in our communities. I ain't got time to be dealing with no distraction that's going to take me away from my purpose and my goal. So that's what this video is about. It's about all the distractions that's going on in the world with um, the Jackson guy. He was a, a relationship guru. For one, I like to say, ladies, I really don't understand why women follow men and they call themselves relationship gurus. You have so many women out there that's willing to help you, develop you, and love you, and, and give you gems of wisdom, and we don't listen to them enough. Um, so I don't, I, I really never understood why so many women flock to the men, and I think it's all about personality and uh, charisma. So I think it's a little bit more fleshy than it really should be if we're really gonna get advice for somebody. Um, so we need to check our motives too Before we get to following all these other men That really you don't know what they're doing in their personal life And it's just crazy But 
um, it's pulling us away from our distractions. So, I mean, from our, our purpose and what we need to do. They're great distractions going on right now. So I challenge every person out there, male or female, be careful what you take on and make sure it's not pulling you away from where God is calling you to go because that's what all of this junk is about. And um, my prayers go out to the Jackson family. I really don't like her husband personally, but that's just my personal opinion. I think that he is very manipulative. I think he's very lustful. And I think he, he really, he should not be married to any woman, let alone her. But if she wants to try to make it work, because I've seen women stay in marriages like that. They try to make it work over and over and over again. And then they end up this vessel of a woman. So when she's finally done, she has zero to give to the man that maybe God had really for her. Because we allow stuff to be put and thrown in front of us and we act too quickly that we may be missing what God really has for us. And then after we get out of the mess that we're in, we're so broken we're just this vessel of a person. We're just so empty and broken that we can't even receive another human being. I see people do that all the time. They allow one person to mistreat them and beat them up to a point to where they're so down here, they can't receive nobody up here. And so then they just slum it. If they do accept somebody in their life, they're going to be where they are. And they're just they going to slum it together. And then they're going to have this whole toxic relationship thing going on. And I'm saying enough with that. We need to build ourselves up high and stay up there and meet people where, where we are and stop slumming it. I said to one, <laughs> to somebody really close to me, I said, you know, God has put you up here with the eagles. Why do I catch you down here with the buzzards? You know, or the birds or the, you know, you way up here, but I'm always seeing you push yourself down so you can meet people down low. That's not where God is calling you. He done already elevated you. Why are you down there? I'm trying to understand that. Why? You know, so we have to figure that out. And it's, it's about healthy, learning healthy boundaries is something that most Christian people did not learn. And people argue with me all the time over this, but I'm sorry. I love the God that I love and I serve is not going to allow me to be abused, raped, murdered, and all of those things, you know, for people that believe that uh, they can just come and murder us and, all, and, and then five minutes later we're saying forgive I forgive you F that I want vengeance and I'm not going to rest until God give them to me if you hurt somebody I love you don't get a pass on that nobody gets a pass you don't get to walk all over me and hurt me and, and, and do whatever you want to me and then I'm just supposed to forgive you. And then me saying I forgive you gives you another free pass. And then so you do it again. And then you do it again and you do it again. And there is no, I don't see, there's no love in that. That's not who I serve. So I don't know who y'all serving. You better check how you were taught religion or Christianity. You better check it. Because it was used as a form of manipulation and control. And our masters taught the black preachers how to preach this stuff to us to keep us under control y'all better learn you better learn and study yourself approved are you gonna live this low servient life all your life because you believe that's where you're supposed to be no i believe god is calling us higher that's where i'm going nobody's going to come into my life and mistreat me forever long they that i, I allowed them to nobody i'll be alone first so I challenge everybody to get with it. Study, show yourself approved. If you haven't learned healthy boundaries, there's books out there that, that will uh, help you learn how to have healthy boundaries. Um, there's a book by, I think, Townsend that writes, I should have that information. I'm gonna put it on my, um, my um, when I post this to YouTube, I'm gonna put it under there so you can I can give like books that I've read that, that has helped me on learning how to have healthy boundaries. I just can't recall the author's name at the time. Um, but there's a couple out there that was really good that helps me. And I have, I still have those books to this day. I highlight them, I go back, I read them, and I study them, and I make sure that not only do, um, you know, I'm expecting other people to have healthy boundaries, I need to have healthy boundaries as well. So I'm always checking myself too. It's not just, because we all, we're always in the, 
a learning progression to move forward and so i'm always trying to learn and study myself improve and i hope that everybody else does that and so this is just a, a conversational piece about all the distractions that's going on out there because there's a lot of them and we have to be really careful that we don't judge other people's marriages or situations and watch who we put our mouths on because before you know it that stuff could be knocking at your door and you don't know how your spouse is going to handle it you don't know how you're going to handle it and that's why i say just depending on where i am in my life will depend on how i handle something like that if it was to come up so we got to be real um caring and understanding about that everybody's in a different place and we black you know especially we black women we need to stick together we shouldn't be talking about this woman's appearance and and how stupid she is or, or anything like that we should be uplifting her in prayer and giving her uh as much support as we possibly can so that's my little two cents on all the distractions going on in the world with uh Derek jackson and his wife miss jackson and even with the kirk franklin situation and his son and my heart goes out to them and uh we need to keep them lifted in prayer too the enemy comes to kill steal and destroy and i know that's true it wants to destroy the family it wants to destroy the family unit but we have to make sure we're clothed in 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 the right stuff and that we put the right stuff in our peripheral the right people situations and all of that so that we can do what god has called us to do okay i've been on here 30 minutes <laughs> too long uh but um i really appreciate you guys if you haven't done so already i know i don't have a lot of content because i'm a very very busy person i am um building my real estate business and my tax business and i also i'm a mother and so i'm constantly on the go and this is just a message of hope i try to put hope out there I try to give us a little bit of knowledge and wisdom and under and praying that we gain understanding so that we can elevate to the position that God wants us all to be. He doesn't want us to stay down here. He wants us to be way up here and we have to elevate our thinking. Once we change our mind, we ultimately change our lives. And um, I, I appreciate you guys, but make sure you click and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate you all. You all be blessed. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.